Good day, everyone. Uh, before I even start my presentation, I'd like to sincerely apologize for not being here yesterday. I know my presentation was meant to be yesterday, but there was some misalignment, and we ended up um, not being able to make it yesterday. But thanks for having me today. Thanks to Kachiso in absentia. Um, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to just take you through what we are doing within a Tegwini municipality in terms of managing or controlling invasive alien species. Um, so there are three items that I'd like to take you through. One is the projects that we have within the Tegwini municipality in terms of what, what is happening. And secondly, is around our managed area prioritization so that we rank our, 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 our properties. And finally, I'll take you through some of the processes that, that we've been through and the challenges also that we've been through in terms of developing the IAS management plan. There, were, there was a submission deadline for the end of September 2016 and also going forward because they need to be reviewed every five years, So, which, uh, which means our next submission is in 2021. Okay, before we even start, just to align with uh, what Dr. Adrian was saying about biodiversity. Biodiversity is life and is also the basis for life. So conserving biodiversity is key to service delivery, more especially for us as local authorities because we render services to our communities and having biodiversity on our side plays a huge role. Some of you might remember the study that was done by Miles Mander and uh, in partnership with Case Noir Love in terms of what are the financial implications of not managing your biodiversity when it comes to uh, ecosystem services. And invasive alien species have proven to be a significant threat to indigenous biodiversity and their impacts in terms of uh, indigenous biodiversity laws and decline in ecosystem services are forever increasing. So those are some of the challenges that we are facing. And just to add to some of the challenges that we also have, uh, controlling invasives costs a lot of money. It, it takes a lot of uh, resources in terms of expertise, manpower, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a huge challenge. And oftentimes, the infestation coverages are huge. So the problem is massive, and you don't know where to start. Um, also, in working with other departments, they have different uh, uh, priorities. For instance, if I were to draw on a uh, uh, department of housing or human settlement, all they are doing is more around chasing numbers. Build, they need to build so many houses within a certain time period, overlooking the, the, the implications of the developments that they, they bring onto, onto the ground. Those are some of the challenges. And also, there's lack of partnerships. We work in silos. We've got departments that don't talk to each other. Even within departments, we've got branches that don't want to talk to, to, to each other. And that creates a lot of uh, problems in terms of managing invasives, among other things. And there's lack of compliance. People do know what, means, what, what is not supposed to be happening, but they'll do it anyway, because there's no one enforcing that particular legislation or whatever. Um, in as much as we are doing what we are doing, I mean, the programs that I'll show you started years ago, but oftentimes you'll find that showing the results or seeing the results is not easy. So people easily, when they don't see what you've been doing, they'll say, you're not doing anything, or you, you don't know what you are doing, and so on and so forth. So oftentimes you have to defend what you have done in trying to go on and, and continue doing what you need to do. So those are some of the challenges. And you'll also appreciate the work that was done by Rockstrom and others in terms of the planetary boundaries, as you can see that map there. Uh, in terms of how we've overshot the safe operating spaces in as far as biodiversity is concerned, uh, climate change is concerned, a phosphorus uh, uh, cycle and, and nitro nitrogen cycle. We've overshot those boundaries. So what we're trying to say is we need to have partnerships. We need to come together with our communities, different people with different uh, uh, expertise, stakeholders uh, coming into one room, and we need to talk together. Because if we were ever to win this war against invasive alien species, I don't think it will be ever be ascribed to one uh, 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 a department or, 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 or one stakeholder and so on. It, it's, it's a teamwork. It needs to be done in that, in that, in that sphere. So even when it comes to, to, to challenges, we don't need to be pointing fingers to saying you're not doing anything. The question is, what are you doing? Because this is a team effort, and everyone is part of that team. Um, now, let's come to Eteguini and see what is happening. Firstly, we have our three large-scale programs. The first one on the far uh, right is the, uh, the Working on Fire. We changed the name. It's now called Fire and Invasive Species Control Program. This program applies fires to manage our grasslands, more especially the KZN Sandstone Sauerfeld, during the dry season. In the wet season, they will go into other areas where they will need to apply uh, IIS control. 
uh, applying other means, maybe herbicide or, or, or whatever means, or, or mechanical and so on and so forth. Uh, in the middle, we have the community reforestation program, but I'll talk about that one last. So towards my side here, we have the invasive island species control program. I ask trading as working for ecosystems. That's the one in particular that I, I currently manage. We'll choose catchment areas or ecosystem service areas, and we remove invasives throughout the year. All our programs are site specific. So we remove any invasive island plant, because at the moment our great focus is around plants, even though there's something that we are doing around fauna. So our, our programs are site specific, uh, and we'll remove invasives applying, through, uh, applying different uh, uh, methods. With the working on fire and working for ecosystems, we remove invasives, and oftentimes there is nothing we, we replace them with, even though there is uh, uh, follow-ups that we do. Because once we start working on a site, we don't pull out. That's in terms of our best practice. So in the middle, we have the community reforestation program where we identify degraded indigenous forests. And once we've removed uh, invasives, we replace them with indigenous plants that used to occur in that particular area. So the, the reforestation program is more uh, comprehensive than uh, the other two, even though they all complement each, each, each other. Okay, then on top of that, so we'll have those three large-scale programs. We also employ a large-scale auditing program which will audit the work that we do ourselves. With the audit is in terms of what was agreed on in the, in the contract, because they're all contracts, uh, and also in terms of legislation to make sure that everything that is done in those sites is as per legislation. And sometimes when we go to our sites, we even invite a deaf, um, the deaf um, uh, resource officer, it used to be Ayanda Goba, would come with us to check our work on, on our sites and he give us, gives us uh, reports in terms of his own perspective and we take those back to our implementing agents to make sure that, sure that we align with legislation. And now we're inviting our biosecurity officers to be part of that, those uh, site visits which we conduct on an, a monthly basis. Um, within the Working on Fire and Working for Ecosystems uh, program, we have roaming teams, which are called early detection and rapid response teams. These focus on emerging weeds. Now, emerging weeds are species that are not yet categorized in terms of uh, uh, category one or two or whatever, but they are showing signs of invading. So these teams will go anywhere within the Etiogeni municipality. Remember I said those three programs were site specific, but these roaming teams will go anywhere as long as it's within Etiogeni municipality to control those uh, uh, emerging weeds. Uh, we also have IAP identification and, uh, and control uh, uh, training, which we give to anyone who is working within a Teguini, whether you're private or you're whatever. As long as you are working within a Teguini, we'll give you training, and we often fund it ourselves. Because we're trying to ensure that anyone who's controlling invasives know, know what they are doing and what needs to be controlled. Um, we have a herbicide assist program, which is embedded within the Working on Fire program. We, we provide herbicide, maybe to conservancies or to private landowners and so on and so forth, but we train them first on how to apply that herbicide. Uh, we also have the IAP naming into Isizulu. This is a project that started with, uh, I started with um, uh, Jessica Coburn as well here, uh, uh, during tea time. We started this particular program over a cup of tea where we realized that in an environment where a, a large group of people speak Isizulu and they don't understand either English or these scientific names, they often confuse these invasives with indigenous plants. And when they need to go and gather uh, plants for medicinal use or whatever, they end up collecting the wrong species. Or when they cannot find what they need, which is indigenous, they will switch and take something that has a similar name to, uh, uh, to what they were looking for, or which looks similar to what they were looking for. And that ends up propagating these species, which, which, we, which is what we, we don't want. So we are now embarking on naming them into Sizulu and we're trying to standardize this ac acro across the province because we've got people coming from all over the prov province to work with us in naming these plants into Sizulu. Uh, we also conduct necessary and parks audits within Teguini in partnership with the uh, Natural Resource Department to make sure that our necessaries and parks don't have uh, invasives uh, in, in their spaces. We have Weed Buster Week where we share information. We have the beautiful but dangerous posters, the flashcards, which is what we understand to be invasive uh, co uh, of concern within a Teguini. We share that particular information, what we are doing and, and the challenges that we are facing. Uh, there's one that we are hosting tomorrow. I'll be part of that. And we do that, we, we do that uh, on an annual basis. Um, 
We also have a strategy on controlling invasive alien species. It's the IAS framework strategy and action plan, which identifies and assigns the roles and responsibilities to different departments within the municipality to say, on your property, this is what you need to be doing. And oftentimes we'll meet to make sure that those uh, responsibilities are met or if there are challenges to find ways of addressing them. We have the IAS management plan. We've drafted the first one this year, but I'll talk about that later. We have the Sitlanzim Velo cleaning, uh, stream cleaning program, which, which lies with the roads and stormwater department, where they are managing our streams in terms of uh, clear, clearing invasives. There is the parks leisure, uh, this is the parks department. They also do their own projects of controlling invasives, more especially around road verges and so on and so forth. We have the Deben Green, Green Corridor, which also works on around uh, uh, um, freshwater systems. Uh, there's the Working for the Coast program, which is implemented by DEA along the coast of, of the Teguini municipality. There's work by EWT Endangered Wildlife Trust on, 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 on wetlands. Um, they currently have five wetlands that they, are, that they have identified in terms of the Picas Grill Frog conservation. And our plan is once their funding comes to an end, we are planning to adopt those uh, uh, sites so that we continue managing those uh, sites for, um, for the frog. There's also work done by Kazan Wildlife within the in terms of the protected areas that we have, and we do appreciate that. There is the Aquatic Weed Working Group, uh, of which I'm a part of, uh, which is looking at the Umgeni Corridor between Meritzburg and, and Durban in terms of controlling invasives. Um, it, it comprises of Umgeni Water, Duct, Working for Water, Sersri, Sanbi, and other stakeholders. There is work done by Sanbi in terms of controlling the Category 1 a species. Uh, there is the Sand Parks project, which is focusing on gum trees. They're removing gum trees within a terrain and making uh, desks or coffins and so on and so forth. Uh, there's the work by working, uh, uh, working on fire, which is the high altitude team, uh, HAT for short. They're controlling invasives on cliffs, on areas that are, are, are difficult to access and uh, they apply their skills in terms of uh, those particular environments. There is work done by in, uh, conservancies, whether individually, whether in, in their own uh, smaller spaces, or as a, as a, as a group, because we have a Teguini Conservancy Forum, so they work as, 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 a, as a team, and we appreciate that as well. There is work by working for water in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, the biocontrol pro program, where they are releasing biocontrol agents to control invasives. It does help us a lot, for instance, where we don't have budget to work on certain areas, we are able to release biocontrol agents in those particular spaces. So with that, you'll appreciate that there's a lot of work that is happening within Eteguini. So it's a challenge on us then to understand who is doing what, where, what challenges are they facing, and how do we put all of that information into one package. And lastly, we also have the managed area prioritization study that I, I, I showed uh, you earlier. So to focus on, on, on that particular one, what happens is, there's vast areas of, 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 of land or properties that are owned by different departments within a Tewini. So we put those together in terms of our GIS layer to understand which department owns which areas. As you can see at the top, that's EPCPD, that's our department. There's also NRD towards the end of that red uh, uh, box there, which is the uh, parks department. Um, Tewini has several departments, but fortunately there's understanding between EPCPD and parks. So we are able to work together based on that uh, un understanding. So once we understand which, 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 which properties are owned by which department, and we're able to project them uh, to know wh exactly where they are and so on, then we do our prioritization. There's two objectives that we uh, 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 implement. One is on those properties that, are that we own, we need to understand what invasives occur on those properties. Secondly, we need to prioritize them, okay? So we end up with two products. One is a list of prioritized areas, okay? And we also have a list of invasive alien species on those properties. Now the invasive list, uh, uh, invasive, invasive alien species list is not prioritized. It's only the properties. So once that is done, then we are able to take it to each department to say, your properties are these ones, and this is how they are prioritized. These are the species that you'll find in there. We'll give you training in terms of how to control them. You go ahead and do that. We'll also do the same thing on our own properties. So there are uh, criteria that we apply. For instance, the biodiversity and ecos ecosystem services, the current and future impacts of IAPs on those proper particular properties, the feasibility of controlling them, the socioeconomic impacts 
in terms of applying these uh, control techniques. So if we just take one of those criteria, which is the biodiversity and ecosystem services, uh, the way we score them is we'll have indicators like the terrestrial conservation importance, the aquatic conservation importance, and ecosystem services provision by that property. We also overlay that with our ecosystems, uh, the systematic conservation assessment information, and also the, um, the, the DEMOS layer that we have within Eteguini. So once that is done, then we are able to understand the, 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 the coverage of invasives, okay? And we are also able to pull out the most commonly occurring invasives within those properties, as you can see. And on top of that, we are also able to understand the emerging species, because when we apply this uh, methodology, we also look at the emerging species. We have a website where we list only the emerging, uh, uh, emerging species for Eteguini. So once we've done this whole thing, then we are able to understand the, in, the emerging species and the most commonly occurring uh, species within Eteguini. Now we take that and we look at the top 10 and the last 20 emerging, uh, I mean, winning blocks or properties on our priority list. As you can see in the far right, we have Palmit Nature Reserve. Uh, that's how it ranked number, um, it ranked number one. The overall prioritization score for it was, was 10, and so on. So we do that with all the, 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 the weeding blocks, and then we ask ourselves who, which department owns which, 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 which property. As you can see, some are owned by Parks NRD, or some are owned by us, EPCPD. Now we group those according to the department. Uh, what's coming up there is just our, our areas that we manage in terms of this. Um, that's Kiba Court, which is a specially rated area, just before you reach the uh, um, Marion Hill Tolget Plaza. And that's Rosefontein Nature Reserve, which has recently been proclaimed. So then we are able to understand how those pro uh, properties uh, perform in terms of the pro this prioritization. Then we pull out properties owned by parks or managed by parks, and we, we pull out the, the ones that we own. Then you are able to tell parks that your, your properties, uh, you, you need to pay more attention to Palmit Nature Reserve, Ilanda Wilds, and so on and so forth. EPCPD, these are your most important areas, Giba Gorge, Rosefontein, Bluff, Grasslands, MPC, and so, and so on and so forth. So each department then will need to manage those properties. And regularly, we'll, we'll revisit this prioritization and ask each other, what have you done, what have you uh, achieved? Okay, now let's look at what legislation says. Um, the NEMBA Act 10 of 2004 was recently amended and that was gazetted on the 1st of August 2014, which stated that all organs of state must, put, must have plans in place for controlling invasives within their jurisdiction. And they have to produce management plans and submit those to DEA and SANB by the end of September 2016. Now, when you go to a local authority and say you need to produce a plan, the challenge is not all the land within that, that uh, local authority is owned by that local authority. If you go to Eteguini, about 67% is owned by Ngonyama Trust. There's also uh, some other pieces of land owned by private landowners and so on and so forth. Even the properties that are owned by Eteguini, they sit or they are vested with different departments. Now the challenge is there's not one department that has got powers over another. So we cannot go to another department and say, this is what you need to do. That's a challenge. So to meet that particular target, we did produce something and that is what it uh, it, it contains in terms of the contents. And when we submitted, I think in the country only four submissions were made uh, and that became a, prob uh, a problem. I'm glad that Zingaba is, is sitting there at the corner. But I believe that the date, the deadline was moved to some time next year. But we have made our submission. We're now working on, on, on the future one, which is for 2021. So what I've done now is I've drafted a report that goes to our city manager via his deputy deputies, which we call depu uh, deputy city manager, DCMs, to say to him, this is what we need to do, to do in terms of the law, and these are the implications of not complying. And we've told him that uh, as EPCPD, we don't have powers to invite other departments to be part of this. Even if we can invite them, it mustn't be a once-off invitation. They need to come and they need to take responsibility on their own uh, behalf. So we would like people to come and be part of this process, but the responsibilities, the responsibilities that come from that invitation must be enshrined in their own uh, uh, individual per performance plans. So it must be something that they talk to 
on a quarterly basis, on an annual basis. It mustn't be a once-off visit and it ends there. So we've written a report to the uh, city manager and I've attached a, a circular which is gonna go to all the departments that we have. For instance, if you look at the Depart Department of Housing, they own vast areas of land within a Teguini. Some of the land parcels that they have, they don't even know where they are. So they'll need to be part of this process. We work with them, there'll be training in terms of what to look for. There'll need to be uh, uh, systems in place so to gather information out there in the field. We sit together, we, we synthesize that, and we produce a report at the end uh, to meet the deadline. So we've written a report to the city manager to invite all relevant departments to be part of this process. We are pro we've proposed that there be a working group, which is the Teguini Municipality Invasive Alien Species Working Group, which will have a chairperson, and it will have terms of reference, meeting frequencies, reporting formats, roles and responsibilities put in their individual performance plans, uh, will identify and invite relevant stakeholders like Kesno Wildlife, uh, conservancies, and so on and so forth. We'll have monitor monitoring protocol by the end of 2017, and we implement this beginning of 2018, and we produce our report by April 2021. That is the end of my talk, thank you.